Welcome back to the channel guys. We got a few things we're going to do today. We're going to get the paint quoted on this truck. That way we know what it's going to cost to get this truck repainted or what all he would recommend we do to it. And the paint is actually called Maximum Steel Metallic. So we did get the paint uh, name and we did get the paint code for it as well from the previous owner. That way we can transfer that information over to Miguel and he knows what to do. We're going to take the trailer with us right now, but we're not going to be using this truck to tow today. But we're actually going to be getting a paint quote for this truck, redo whatever he recommends on this thing. Sometimes he recommends just doing, you know, like it's just the dually fenders that are bad. He might just recommend that. But if it's like, ah, uh, the paint quality in this kind of sucks, I would just recommend doing the whole thing. He'll give me a price on that as well because if that's what he says, then we'll do that. But if he's like, no, the paint's great. It's just these couple spots I can do real easy. Then we'll just, we'll do that. You know, I'm going to do what he recommends. And then we're going to pick up the 0124 valve because that truck just got dropped off a little bit ago to have the windshield replaced because it has a cracked windshield, which this one does too. So got the windshield replaced on it before it goes off to Arizona. Alignment done on that. Those are just the last two things that we needed to make sure we're done on that truck and it's gonna be ready to go. But one last thing we're gonna do with that truck before it goes, I've never pulled the trailer with that truck with a load on it. I thought it would be interesting to film a video with that truck before it leaves. One last video of how does it handle towing with a lifted truck. Not just a lifted truck though, a lifted automatic second gen compared to like this is what we did on Friday's video of last week. We did towing with the five speed. That was super easy. It was nothing for this truck, but it's also not got a huge lift on it. It doesn't have giant wheels and tires and it's not an automatic. So we're going to see the difference and I'll let you know my honest opinion on how much better it handles on a 3500 that's close to stock in terms of right height and stuff versus a five inch lifted second gen with an automatic transmission and massive wheels and tires on it. Compare the two and uh, it'll be interesting. I think it'll do totally fine. It's just gonna be a lot different. And we're gonna be hauling the exact same load as we did with this one. We're gonna be hauling the same tractor. We're gonna be doing the same route. Well, we got our clover seed picked up for those food plots and we're about to pull up to get the quote. So fingers crossed that somehow it's not a full blown paint job, but we'll see, we'll see. We do have the dually dropped off. We did get a quote on the dually. I'm not gonna give you the quote amount. Let's just say it is in the uh, several thousand dollars to get the paint done on the truck. He said that he would recommend doing the whole thing. So we're just gonna do the whole truck and that is maximum, I think it's called maximum steel metallic. He's like, this thing is gonna look so good when it's done. I'm just, I hate all the rock chips all over it. The hood's a little bit faded. You could tell the, you know, whatever they did in terms of a clear coat or whatever. The paint was only done, I think less than six years ago, less than six years, but it's already kind of fading a little bit on the hood. And so he said that he's just gonna redo the whole thing and uh, it's gonna look really good. We're not getting it done yet. He's booked until the first week of April, but then it's gonna get in for paint. But yeah, we did get it quoted though, so that's what we're gonna end up doing on the truck. We just picked up the silver truck, the second gen that um, is going off to Arizona. However, right now we've got the trailer hooked up to it, empty. We're gonna head over to my parents' place, see if we can load the tractor up, see how this thing handles. You gotta keep in mind this truck's already a little bit squatted by an inch. It's an inch higher in the front than the rear. It's kind of at a disadvantage in terms of does it look like it's struggling to hold the weight, you know, but you'll be able to tell the difference. We'll get a good view of it before it's loaded up and then after, and you guys can decide for yourself how much more this thing is sitting down. Keep in mind, this truck also does not have airbags, which the dually did. And one more note, I did text the winner and I did ask them if it was okay if I towed with their truck today. So before anybody comments, oh my gosh, don't tow with somebody else's truck, it's not yours anymore. I understand that the truck has technically already been given away by you know announcing the winner and stuff, but I did text them, I reached out to them, I asked them if it was okay if I used their truck for the day and for this video, and they said that's totally fine, go for it. So let's get to it. So here she is, the 24 valve. We do have tape on the windshield, but that's because we had a brand new windshield put in and apparently Safe Flight says, you wanna keep the tape on the windshield for like 48 hours or something, then you can remove it. I don't know why, but I don't do windshields for a living, so that's what they say. Um, but here's the truck. Like I said, it does lean a little bit. It's an inch higher in the front than it is the rear. So it's already got a little bit of little bit of lean to it um, but what we're gonna do is try to have the tractor on the trailer to where it's about how we hauled it uh, yesterday with the dually before we put the bush hog on so I'm gonna keep the bucket not all the way to the front but about here and keep the rear tires of the tractor 
right about where the center of these fenders are. Uh, and then, you know, obviously the goal is not to put tons of weight on the truck. You want to have enough so that you don't have any fish tailing going on, but you don't want to have so much weight on the truck to where it's just like unnecessary. Now this does not have overload springs on it. The reason for that is with the lift kit that we did on this truck, it says you need to remove them. I don't know why. That's just what the kit said. So that's what Devin did. Anyways, here is the amount of space there is right now uh, between the bump stop here and the leaf pack. I'll put my hand here. It's about like that. So I can put my entire hand under here and I've still got about two inches before I would touch that with my thumb. So let's, so let's load this thing up and see how much it squats by loading it the same way we did yesterday. So we're gonna pull the tractor on here where I explained and then see what it looks like once it's loaded up. Not too bad. It went down about an inch. So as you can see, I got the tractor about where I want. I got the bucket with about this second tie down here. But you can see here, my thumb is about an inch away now, not two inches. Same on the other side, of course. We're gonna get this strap down and get it hauled over and see how it does first on the little five mile trip over to the other farm. And then once we get over there, it'll be the real test going from there about 25 or 30 miles over to the Ohio farm. Tractor strapped down, I've got overdrive turned off. Time to get on the road and see how this does. The first little five mile stretch is gonna probably give us a good feel of what the trip's gonna be like. so good let's see how the braking is I've got an electronic brake controller so let's see how it goes I tested it before I had a load and it was I mean when I tested it you know the controller down there it, it didn't yank hard I tuned it toned it down to where um, it pretty much kind of to where it braked about as good as the truck could and then just a little bit more and then I just upped it a little bit once I put the tractor on here The only difference is tractors loaded in the same spot. The only difference is we added on the tiller. We added the rotary tiller to the back. So here we are. I cleaned out the tines the best that I could real quick for loading it up. I've got a strap running over the attachment. 
so it doesn't rattle around. The truck didn't squat any more than it already was. It's got about my hands gap and about an inch and a half above it still inch inch and a half which is basically what it was without the tiller the tiller is not like a huge difference especially since the tiller's on the very end of the trailer let's get on the road we've got a, about 25 to 30 miles here to test this thing out so far though the five mile trip over here was totally flawless truck ran great sounded so freaking good with a load on it pulling you got that deep commons growl I mean, it, it sounds so much better with a load on it. It looks so squatted with that trailer on it. Like, it's just crazy how squatted it looks. But the actual spacing back here, I mean, I've still got my hand and about an inch, inch and a half. I mean, it's, I guess it's on a little bit of an incline too, but whatever. Let's get on the road. So we're about to do the first highway test and probably the only actual highway test with this truck. So we're gonna first have to go up this steep grade right here to get onto the highway ramp. So we're gonna pull around this corner and see how she does climbing up a hill. Fifty miles an hour down this road and I've got a truck with a track trailer and a tractor on it and then I literally get like I start to see her slowing down but she doesn't have any lights on or anything yet and then she literally stops and I'm at this point I'm like I don't know a hundred feet away from a being about to pass them and then she flips out her sign as soon as the front of my truck is basically getting to about where the bus is at she flips out her stop sign and puts on the flashing lights and I'm already passing and she's like blowing on her horn and like flipping me off. Not to mention her door on the side of the bus wasn't even open yet and there were no kids coming out of the bus yet. I can't stop on a dime. Some people drive me nuts. Ordinarily, if I see a bus stop, obviously I stop. If I have, stop if I have time to stop, I stop. 
and I wait. That was a moment when I'm like, I don't know if this bus is gonna stop or not. Then by time she did stop, and she starts flipping on her lights, I'm already getting, I'm like basically already passing them, going 50 miles an hour. So we made it, we're here, plot number one. This is Reagan's spot, call it Reagan's spot. Uh, just because this is a buddy sin that I set up for her when we first bought the property. So we're going to get to planning this location. I think it's about, it might only be about an eighth of an acre at most. So I'm going to show you what this little spot looks like. It's not huge. So you can see it goes all the way over to the blind there, which is probably about 40 yards from right here. And then it goes to the blind. Um, it's about where the tractor is. And then it's only about 10 yards wide. I don't know what that acreage comes up to, but it's not much. At most an eighth of an acre, I would guess maybe maybe a six if you're pushing it but it's a pretty small location but it'll be a nice little spot because in bow season this is usually super dense but there's tons of sunlight right in the spot so it's going to be great for clover and that's what we're going to do we're going to till this up and seed down some clover and hopefully with the freezing and thawing that's happening every day right now and it's supposed to only slowly get warmer it'll be perfect and we're supposed to get a bunch of rain next week for two or three days and it's it should be just about perfect plot number one is done tilled seeded should be all good to go i would pack it but the problem is the mud is a, it's just sticky enough to where it's not it's not soupy but it's just sticky enough to where if I drive around, I'll probably just pick up all the seeds on the tire. And I don't really think I want to do that. Hopefully the rain that we get in the next two days kind of washes the seed down in and kind of levels out a little bit of this loose dirt and kind of helps it get just enough covering. But if it doesn't, worst case scenario, we have to replant in the fall. But I think the rain that's coming should be enough to kind of get the seed situated and help it take off quick. We're in the second location and location number two here is a lot bigger area. This is probably uh, total planting area is probably about a half of an acre to three quarters of an acre. It goes a little ways though. So it's about 10 yards wide like the other one. I like my plots to be more narrow so they're, they kind of feel more like a feeding trail more than like a wide open vast space so what we've got here is about a 10 yard wide strip and it goes all the way down to where you can't hardly see anymore and then the trail still goes out of sight where you can't see anymore about the same length as the distance that you can see so this total stretch is probably about 140 give or take and uh, it's about 10 yards wide the whole way it just kind of winds around through but it's gonna be a really nice feeding spot. We're gonna do clover in this as well. The neighbors have giant ag fields, but what I wanna to try to stick to is clover, uh, bright green stuff that's pretty much here, spring, summer, fall, and they can dig it up in the winter if they want. And in terms of maintenance, all I have to do is mow it, just because back in the woods here, it's kinda of hard to grow like corn and beans and all this other stuff, unless I bulldoze out a bunch of space, which I really don't wanna do, especially since knowing these deer, all the way up until probably the first of December when guns are blazing. The deer are always in the neighbor's cornfield anyways, picking up their corn and just having a heyday. And they can spread out over there much more, get away from each other. The field's like a hundred acres and it's, you know, the deer can pile out there and, you know, do their own thing and not be bothered. So I mostly just want to focus on good food for turkey and fawning and stuff like that here. I know some people say you don't want to you don't want to have a crops that just bring in does, but the does are already here without anything on the property already because there's so much freaking browse. If you just look around, it's so thick in here. There's so much browse that we just we can hold a lot of deer numbers. The deer just freaking love it. Now we do have a lot of does here, but we also have a lot of bucks. You know, it can kind of go both ways. Sometimes a lot of does is bad for certain locations, but for other areas, a lot of does are okay and your property can handle it and you've got a lot of bucks to go right along with that. I've got footage of some really, really nice bucks we saw last year and it was broad daylight. I mean, shooting light, broad daylight, they, the only issue is, the only reason why I didn't tag a buck last year on this property is it's archery only and it's very difficult to get those deer under 40 yards and that's the only challenge that I faced last year was first year hunting a property, we closed on the property in the middle of the season. It was already pretty rut when we closed on it so we had no time to like situate where we really wanted stands, 
We had no idea how the deer acted. We had no intel on the property other than the guy said, hunt this half the property, don't go back into the timber. You'll, you'll shoot a giant buck. You know I mean? He shot one every year. He's like, I mean, he's like, you'll shoot a giant buck by the 1st of November if you know what you're doing. And I'm like, okay, so I really had no intel. And it turns out I was hunting the opposite end of the property from what he was telling me to hunt the whole time because of a miscommunication. I thought he was saying one thing and he was saying something completely different. I'm like, oh, great. Well, we'll know for next year. Cause once I finally realized what he meant, I had messaged him. He's like, oh no, dude, you're hunting the wrong end of the property. I finally went over and I started hunting the other end of the property and I started seeing bucks at crazy. Live and learn, it was the first half season on the property really. So we're gonna get these plots in and uh, just put as much food as we can in this property that can grow in somewhat of a shade area. And uh, hopefully this clover takes off in here. This is a type of clover. It's a species of white clover. It's a type of white clover that's supposed to do really good in shaded areas. If it's true, I don't know, but we're gonna throw this in the ground and see what happens. Plot number two, successfully planted. Well, hopefully successfully, because we won't find out till there's stuff growing. But the soil, um, the soil's pretty, I mean, it seems pretty good. I mean, you can see it's kind of, it's, it's damp, but it's not muddy. See what I'm saying? It's like nice and loose, like, but it's got moisture and you can feel the moisture in it, but it's not like cakey. Um, it was in the other location. It was like not soupy, but it was pretty sticky. But this stuff's actually pretty, it's pretty nice. It's well-drained soil up here, not too drained. I think I got it seeded about the right amount. Obviously clover, you can seed a little bit, a little bit closer together, I guess you could say, other than like uh, turnips. I'm gonna start at the back of the plot and then walk all the way to the other end so you can see the full length of it. It's it's pretty, it's actually a pretty long plot, but it's gonna be, oh, if this grows good, this spot is going to be a money rut spot for a buck stopping by to get a bite to eat. Gonna walk down this trail, make some scrapes, check for does, it's gonna be a lot of fun. So there's a couple trails that merge back here, some old logging roads. There's one that goes down this way. There's one that goes down that way, down towards the river. We wanna keep it from here back keep like this back 10 acre patch just untouched like there's 26 acres here but we want this area like most of our ground we don't like walk around in and just like utilize like to do whatever the heck we want with but this is an area that we're not even gonna have stands in the rest of it we're gonna have stands set up in certain spots but we're still gonna like not penetrate into those other areas either unless we're like retrieving a deer but this is gonna be an area that we don't even hunt back here we're not gonna hunt it we're not gonna walk back in there unless obviously we gotta get a deer because that's the ethical thing to do. But we're not going to really utilize the back 10 acres of the property for like anything at all. We're gonna just do our deer management, you know, bedding stuff and all that other jazz this time of year, get that done. And then pretty much not be in there from July or August all the way until the end of the season. We're not gonna touch it. Tons of buck bedding back there, doe bedding everything i mean there's like it's t it's only about 10 acres back there but it is the most versatile 10 acres i've ever seen and there's always tons of deer like if you walk back there right now there's probably 15 20 deer back here bedded down i mean it is just it's awesome if you utilize all of your ground and you don't leave any of it sitting there's a much higher chance you ruin all of your ground um so we don't want to do that we want to give the deer some area that they can you know, walk around in the daylight and they're not gonna encounter us or see us or smell us. But, you know, that's just our preference. So here's the back end of that plot. I'm just gonna walk it with you so you can see the layout of it. Kinda does a little bit of an S. Kind of comes over, winds to the left a little bit. Then it winds back to the right. But it's pretty, it's pretty nice though. It's gonna be a really nice location. Now the only thing about this plot that I haven't quite decided is what tree I wanna to use to hunt it. Cause I don't wanna be like right on top of it, but you know, the point of this plot is to be a feeding slash travel corridor. So you gotta be, you gotta be pretty close. I'm probably gonna favor a tree 
somewhere towards this side of the property because there's a field edge right there. If you've been following along for the last few videos, you know we did a huge hinge cutting edge back there that's pretty, pretty severely hinge cut. So I think I'm going to access on the back side of those hinge cuts, climb up on a tree between the field and here, but make sure I'm within about 20 yards of this uh, food plot here. That way if there's a buck cruising down through here, you know, he's making scrapes under the low hanging branches, looking for does, cause you can't clearly see the whole thing. So he's gonna have to travel it. If he wants to see the whole thing, it'll get us a nice 20 yard shot. And not always true, but in most cases with a plot like this, because of how narrow it is, and it's kind of a long windy trail, these deer are gonna wanna follow it, whether it's left to right or right to left. So what that's gonna do is hopefully give you a higher percentage of actually getting a broadside shot, because it's not like this big round or big square plot the deer are going to be more likely to follow the edge of it and deer are creatures of edge so since they are it's just going to make it a much higher probability that you're going to get that good shot that you want versus not knowing what the deer is going to do in a giant open field a deer could do anything last plot is planted and done this one's right on the edge of the actual actually the neighbor's field so what i'm probably going to end up doing here is dropping a couple more trees hinging them left to right to kind of fill in this area a little bit more with some hinge cutting. You can see I've got a little bit there right now, but I'd like to fill it in a little bit more. Why would I put a plot here right between here and the field? This is a small staging feeding area, and hopefully what it's gonna do is, A, if there's deer out in the field, bring them in a little bit quicker to try to feed on this, or B, what's more realistic is the deer typically come out of our property back in that area that I was telling you about the most and what they do is they feed out right into this opening of this small area anyways and there was just like briars and brushing and stuff and I bush hogged this down with Reagan the other day and what they do is just kind of mingle around in this little brushy area and then they just go out to the plot slowly but now there's actually uh, going to be food here so hopefully it'll get these deer to slow down a little bit feed a little bit more then get to the hinge cut edge maybe browse a little bit there as well then go out to the field. The goal here is to slow these deer down as much as possible before they get out to that field because that's when they're pretty much brown and down. We can only do what's legal and what's within our power and this is one of the things we're gonna try to do to slow them down just a little bit more. Just planted the last plot for the day. Probably the last plot we're gonna plant for the year on this property unless these all fail miserably and then we need to replant. Got the shoulder cedar, love that thing. It's a dream. So here's the plot, here's the final one. Again, soil over in this location too, just really nice, really nice soil. I don't know what the pH is, I'm just saying nice is in like the feel of it. It's like there's moisture in it, but it's still like very loose. It's good stuff. Now, I've never fertilized or limed any of my food plots fun fact and i've never had them really turn out bad other than like two times when i way overseeded them here's the widest part of this whole area here's a 200 year old tree but look at this little rub right here just tore up here's a lot of them in this area because they cut through here a lot there's usually rubs all over here. New rubs everywhere throughout the deer season is what I'm saying, but there's that tree. Pretty cool looking tree. Got some limbs dying on it though, but most of it seems to be still alive. But yeah, here's the, here's the rest of it. It ends just down over there. And that's it. Hopefully it grows. That's all you can hope for. The soil over here was so nice and like, so nice and fine that like, look at my footprints, they're like perfectly shaped out in this stuff. I mean, <laughs> literally inch for inch. I mean, they're just like a perfect footprint through there. I mean, that's how nice the, the soil turned out over here with the tilling. Just enough moisture to where it'll probably help with these seeds taking off as long as they're gonna take off it'll help but not so much in most of these other spots other than the first one that's like so much that it's like sticky and nasty the first one wasn't like terrible but it was a little bit cakey but the rest of them were just about perfect to plant hopefully it all goes well and hopefully this stuff takes off back at the truck all loaded up
Yeah. So the tractor's all loaded back up. We're on our way back to my dad's farm to drop this off, which is about 30 miles. So gonna have to do that drive. But I've only got about 30 minutes left to lighten. It's about a 45 minute drive. What is my takeaway? Lifted truck versus stock height truck. For the most part, stock height truck. Manual versus auto. This truck towed great. Um, I could probably get up the speed quicker in the manual. Um, just because, you know, like with these transmissions and these trucks, like this one, it shifted totally fine. It held high RPM and then shifted when it was supposed to and it you know nothing was weird about it i mean everything was totally functional the way it's supposed to be i guess you just can't hold the rpm where you want them and i don't think the person that won the truck is going to use it to tow every day but you know like if you were going to i would suggest the manual um this truck is super comfortable it's plush it's got leather and all this other stuff it's like it's really nice it's not as stiff in the rear end i would still go with the manual this truck did totally great there's nothing i don't like about it other than the fact that you can't hold your rpms where you want them you can't downshift to help with braking for example when i was accelerating onto the highway it shifted at about 2000 rpm at one point and um, when I was merging, and this is a different part when I didn't have the camera rolling, it's fine, you know, I have overdrive turned it off, turned off and everything, but when it shifted, it wasn't like ideal. Like if I was in a manual, I wouldn't have shifted it at about 2000 to 2100 RPM, which is when it shifted at that time. I would have shifted it closer to 2300 or 2500 RPM, you know, so I can keep that momentum and keep the RPMs higher. So when I shift up into the next gear, I don't lose any speed or you lose that momentum that you need merging with all this weight and then it's like now you're still accelerating but it's just a lot slower because you don't have the rpm anymore so like i mean for me personally i would go manual if you have the option obviously it's kind of hard to find them sometimes more preferred in that sense in terms of it being lifted versus not lifted i didn't notice anything about this truck that had anything to do with it being lifted that felt like it was a compromise like the thing handled great. I can lock fully side to side with this setup on it. Yeah, it might look a little bit silly because it's got a five inch lift. And so when you put weight on the back, you know, it's got to absorb that lift a little bit and it just kind of makes it look like it's worse than it is in terms of squatting. Overall though, the truck didn't handle bad by any means. It handled great. I was actually really surprised how well this handled compared to the dually. I mean, it did a really good job. I was super impressed. In terms of should you tow with a lifted truck, if your lift was done right, I mean, I don't see why not. I mean, as long as you've got the proper hitch, you've got the proper knowledge of what you're doing, I don't see why, I don't see why you should have any problems. This thing did awesome. So anyways, guys, hopefully you enjoyed today's video. Uh, I would have gotten more tractor work on video, but it was just me filming by myself today. The wife was busy cleaning the house and doing laundry and all kinds of other stuff. Reagan, I love you so much. She is literally the best wife. Ever. I've only had one and I'd like to keep it that way but if I had to take my guesses I would say she's probably the best and I couldn't find anybody else I tried to text a couple of people I couldn't get anybody else to come out here and film all in all you got to see some towing content you gotta you got to get my opinion on lifted versus non lifted is it okay to tow with a lifted truck would I do it yeah, I don't see why not so anyways guys if you want to enter to win our 1992 W250 12 valve Cummins plus $5,000 cash. You guys are running low on time, and right now, every $1 is gonna get you five entries to win this 1992 W250 12 valve Cummins you're seeing here, plus $5,000 in cash. And if you wanna enter, it's super simple. Go to lmpgear.com, that's our merchandise website. Buy anything off the store, and as soon as you check out, you're automatically entered to win that truck, plus $5,000 cash. And right now, you get five times the bonus entries. So take advantage of it. Get entered while you can. It's super simple. And one of you guys are going to be taking home that truck plus five grand. Might as well be you. Thank you guys so much for watching. I will catch you in the next video. Peace.